Hey everybody, welcome back to Feedback Loop. It's your boy, Jay Curry. Oh god, it's Jer- it's, jo- it's Joey. <laughs> oh man, it's Jeremy and Joey. We're, we're Feedback Loop podcast. Yeah. Sorry, uh, the intro got a little got a little weird there. <laughs> Did it? I didn't notice. Uh, it's it's a weird episode, so yeah. it's fine. Uh, we normally talk about albums and share these albums, and today we're doing that, but also not doing that. In in that we're doing a kind of a, a twenty twenty recap yeah. for ourselves. Yeah, you sounded like you were going to say something. No, I'm I'm just over just here. Agreeing. Yeah, because <laughs> I had so many albums because this is as most people would know it's been it's been an odd year <laughs> so it's been a year for sure like the amount of albums that i've just like had time to like listen to and reflect on caused there to be a it, it made this a hard decision i guess yeah also uh for those with keen ears might notice joey has an actual microphone now oh yeah i do have a real microphone now so I, it's, it's my it's Christmas a, present. Yeah, it's the start of a new year uh, for for the podcast for for humanity because uh, you guys are listening to this the first Monday in January. So welcome to 2021. You made it through 2020. That's fucking cool. But guess what? You're not out of the woods yet because we're still talking about 2020. Yep. And I mean, just because one year ends doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, are, we, are we gonna Are we gonna talk about time and how meaningless it is? Joey? No, because we have like. We each have yeah, ten albums or five each. Ten. Okay. Five each. Just, yeah. <laughs> no, I came way more prepared than you did, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, we're so uh basically we gave ourselves the assignment, and by we I mean I gave ourselves the assignment. Uh that that's it it varies, so I guess we, we each did. I don't know. I picked five albums uh that came out in twenty twenty that were released in twenty twenty. Uh, that really stood out to me, kind of a top five list of my personal tastes of what I liked this year. Uh, Joey did something slightly different. Joey, do you want to kind of explain what you did? Yeah, I I don't know. Like, Jeremy, he said he usually, for the past few years, has made a list of albums that came out that year. My end-of-year lists are usually albums that I discovered that year and that great, like greatly impacted me that year, at least. So well, hopefully, hopefully you weren't assaulted by any of them. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, I kind of was. If you count <laughs> like emotional, oof, are we get, we're, we're gonna have some heavy albums. Is that what I'm hearing? He- at least heavy to me. Maybe not heavy to anybody else, but cool. It's gonna be like soil work all over again. Exactly. <laughs> Except hopefully they're actually better music. But I mean that. We have a whole episode talking about yeah, how we feel yeah. about sort of work. We don't need yeah, to reha- yeah. rehash that here. Boom. Uh, we're, I guess we're just going to get fucking right into it. Uh, we're, I'm going to do a count up from from five with my favorite 2020 albums. Joey's going to do a top five of his albums that he vibed with. First vibe of the night, vibe <laughs> with in 2020. Vibe <laughs> so check. we're we're gonna we're gonna alternate and and kind of this is it's a bit more casual episode because we don't really have a structure we're just kind of fucking winging it yeah and, dude. Uh, if you guys like this kind of content let us know but uh if you don't also let us know we'll yeah, be going please. back to normal regular uh album review type things soon um but number five on my list i feel like there should be some like music cue there but i, I don't feel like <laughs> uh deftones released oh, an album uh ohms came out september 25th so fairly recent like three months old at this point, uh, the fifth slot I feel like is always the hardest slot for me to fill because mm-hmm. it, it's it's just on the cusp. There's so many albums that I feel deserve to be recognized and mentioned, but this one just kind of edged out a lot of the other ones. I feel like it, it came out at the right time. It's got a lot of ominous sounds, which I feel like is perfect for 2020. Yeah. Granted, I don't think they, well, they they probably did record most of it in 2020. But I don't know. It's, it's very like vibey. It's, it's Deftones. And if you like Deftones, you like Deftones. And if you don't like Deftones, you don't like Deftones. But I don't know. Just it, it hit at the right time for me. Yeah. They're, I mean, Deftones is, uh, they're one of those bands that I feel like can capture the stillness that you feel in your mind pretty well with their, like, not with their, like, intense songs. But right. for me, with, like, their slower songs, it totally captures, like, the ambience that I feel in my mind at times. Yeah. And Ohms definitely. Very, very vibey. <laughs> Ohms was a, it was a close contender for me as well. 
Interesting. So that's so, cool. so if it didn't make it onto your list, what did make it onto your list, Joey? Well, the one I'm starting out with is Nectar by Joji. So it that was, was that was on my contenders list as well. Oh shit. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> and that this one actually did come out in 2020. So yeah. there's that. But uh it was just like you said, it came out I mean it came out around the same time, I'm pretty sure. Like it came out in late September. So, yeah. uh, cause it was delayed. It was supposed to come out in July, but it was, I mean, it's just a, a really good Joji album for me. I mean, it starts off, uh, you is the first track it starts off and it's got like some lonely piano starting off that yeah. just gets really vibey, really spacey and Lil Yachty. I've never heard a song by him. <laughs> me either. He's, uh. He's on this song, Pretty Boy, and man, it's just a really fucking good song, really bassy. Like, it's got, this whole album, though, for the bass, it's got some insane bass. Like, I, I need to revisit it, because I, I guess I should have clarified when I said it was a contender. It was on my list of albums to compete in 2020. Mm-hmm. Uh, I meant to go back and listen to that one specifically to give it a, a better shot. Uh, because I, I don't even know if I finished it, honestly, the first time I listened to it, but it, it's, I, I wanted to, I wanted to give it a good shot. I, there's, there's so many albums, so little time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I, I want to go back to it, especially now that it, it's made it to your top five. You definitely, like a good shot. you definitely need to finish it because part of the reason why it's on here is because I think starting at the song Afterthought, which is my favorite song on the track or song on the album. And starting an afterthought from that point onto the rest of the album, it is one of the best like ending sections of an album I've heard in a little okay, bit. Okay. Okay. That's, so. I, I, I trust you. We, we generally have similar feelings with the uh, album structures and, and especially endings. So that's, it's kind of exciting. Yeah. I got, I got some, some good feels coming off that. Uh, my fourth pick number four on my top five list is a pop album. Oh, which uh, may or may not be expected for me by you at this point, but it's Halsey. She released a, an album at the beginning of the year back in January called Manic, which I just, I don't know. It's a, I've had a lot of time to listen to that album because it came out so early in the, in the year. So obviously it's grown on me a lot, but I just feel like every track on that album is great. And it captures a lot of feelings that I've had previously perfectly and feelings that I'm still having perfectly. And she mm-hmm. just like, I, I think to call her underrated is obviously a mistake because she's huge. Yeah. Like she's a very popular singer and she has a lot of huge hits. One of which on this album uh, was without me, which came out. I feel like that song came out like three years before the album, <laughs> but in reality it was probably like half a year to a year. But uh, even setting, you know, pop radio hits aside, like this album as a concept album is great. She expresses a lot of, feelings and she experiments with different music and stuff and it it's it's somehow just like i don't know it it fucking it hits me and i, I enjoy it. i think this is easily her best album oh shit and i think it's on our i actually put it on our album review list so at some point we might dive into that yeah that's another thing i was wondering about like albums that we put on here like i didn't want to go too far into them because I'm yeah like, <laughs> i'm sure we're gonna review most of these at some point yeah, I'm I'm down to to do all of them, uh, or at least ones that we don't have overlap of. Because like obviously we both listen to Deftones, we both like it. Yeah. So I feel like that would be a pretty. Well, maybe we could talk about it, but I don't know. Uh, Halsey, Manic. That's my that's my number four pick. Boom boom. Yeah. Uh. So my number four pick is band is called Beach Bunny, and oh, the album <laughs> is Prom Queen. Wait. Okay. Okay. I, I think interesting. I think they might be. I might have added them to our list, but I might not have. You, I don't. You did. Okay. And the reason I know this is because they released an album this year. They did. That uh, is called Honeymoon. Mm-hmm. That I recently discovered independently. Because uh, it, it came on my my shuffle. Yeah. Like my 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 YouTube music mix. And it's one of my one of my honorable mentions. Holy so. shit! Okay, okay. So <laughs> honeymoon, I almost put it on here, but I realized more and more that the main reason I was putting it on here is because it came out in 2020, right? And I I just like the concise, be different. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just like the conciseness of Prom Queen better. It's 15 yeah. minutes long. It's an EP. And ev- it's got it's five songs. Yeah, I think yep. it has five songs on it. And it's so it's 15 minutes long, five songs, not too big of a time investment. And every single one is good, like good to me. Because uh, interesting. I heard Prom Queen at, way early in the year. Like I think before, yeah. before we had even started recording this from home before everybody was forced into their house uh yeah because we we did one of our early episodes was the regrets yeah and i think you brought up beach bunny during that episode or shortly after that episode i'm pretty sure i did because at the time they reminded me of them the more i listened to them the less they did but that's i think that's just uh talking to how my music tastes have kind of changed from yeah listening to more and more music that you have suggested or that like I don't know. I can see differences, but they're a great, a great band. They kind of have like a surfy beachy vibe yeah. and uh, they're like indie pop. I guess they're kind of like punk in a way. Like, I don't know. Some of their yeah, early, there's also like some, some kind of like folksy elements, at least on honeymoon. Yeah. That, yeah. That, Cause like, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm saying that based on the fact that the song that came up on my playlist was a uh, rear view, okay. which is a very like kind of, somber folksy acoustic piece kind of a thing yeah there's not a ton of folksiness on prom queen it's more but it's like their earlier stuff so i don't yeah, know it came out two years earlier yeah in 2018 it came out uh but yeah prom queen like that was the first song i heard by them i heard it in the car and it kind of crept up on me like i, I just caught myself at home kind of singing it and i was so like may- maybe this is side sidetracking too far but you, you said you heard it in a car. Is that from do, when you're in a car, how do you receive music? Do you like have like a, a shuffle playlist kind of deal on your phone or do you listen to the radio? Like well, how, how did that come to you? Our, our like, I guess our good car is we can uh, Bluetooth to the radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Alyssa was actually driving and she, I guess had a playlist or something that had them on it. And I just heard it. And it just instantly got caught in my head. So I had to, I had to look it up and then, uh, I love it when that happens. Yeah, it was so good. And then that it turned out the prom queen wasn't even my favorite song off of it. There's a song six weeks, which apparently is like Lily, the singer. It was like her first song that she wrote, I guess. And she wrote it about, she, I guess like broke up with, or some, a guy broke up with her and she was, went on winter break back home from like college or something. So she was writing the song. Like she was just at home for six weeks playing it over and over in her head. And she wrote, it was just a really good song. It's a really real song. And I sing it very loudly whenever I'm in the car alone. <laughs> Interesting. I'll, I'll definitely take a look at that EP. I know it was on our list, but maybe I'll, I'll just, I'll, maybe I'll just peep it, peep it on my own time. Cause I, I did, like I said, I mean, honeymoon was a late contender. They, they showed up like literally within the last two weeks Oh shit. Uh, was when I discovered honeymoon. I was like, this is fucking great. I like this a lot. Hell yeah. Uh, and that's where I, I kind of teased before we started recording about there being some sort of overlap. And I, and that was where I was aiming, aiming at that. So I'm glad that it made your top five. Cause it almost made my top five, well, not yeah. the same album, but the yeah. band. So at, at least they, they were, we're, we're finding more bands in common than I guess our podcast would lead us to believe. Yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> you know, that's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Speaking of albums that we both like, uh, I'm pretty sure you you share the sentiment on my number three pick, which ugh, it's so good. I love this album oh, so shit. much. It is Oliver Tree's new oh, album, Ugly yeah. is Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. It, it came out June 12th, so in the summer it was. It's it's such a good, like he he. I I had not listened to him prior. Uh, I mean, I'd heard some of the singles from this album, which is why I knew that the album existed like a cash machine, Mm -hmm. but it's so rare. I think to find someone that is so genuine in, in their songwriting and so talented at the same time. Like it's, it's, there's something it's, it's magic. What he does, the music, the message, all of it's like spot on and all of it's very weird. And, and I mean that in the best way, it's not like, avant-garde kind of shit yeah but it, it's like it's not what you would expect he he does things with his his music that kind of defy a lot of expectations but 
it's not like esoteric and out there it's still like pop music it's it's still good and it, it i don't know he just like he has a great voice and delivery again his lyrics his music everything it's, it's the full package i fucking love this album yeah it's definitely like it seems like he can kind of just do whatever he wants stylistically on that album and it just works like he just knows how to do it he knows how to combine genres he knows how to make it all work together and it's really cool yeah 10 out of 10 album i would recommend uh everyone check that out i would check it out but i already checked it out so <laughs> we'll check it out again <laughs> i'll check it out again how about that yeah uh, do it for me so my number three is uh a band that i discovered may- maybe in the summertime uh pile summertime. and the album is green and gray uh, i've not heard of said band or album yeah it's uh i actually just discovered them one day whenever i was looking through like related artists on spotify i think i had been listening i don't know i was just in kind of a rocky mood but like not current rock there's like kind of a slow rock that i liked from like the the 90s in the yeah. vein of like hum or i think pep pepper did it pretty well and you know band bands like that like shellac and stuff but sure i've listened to all of those bands <laughs> uh I, it was, I just needed something to scratch that itch and in it i found a band that i absolutely love and pile this album I don't know. It just hits me in an emotional way that I can't entirely put into words. It's just from the very first time that I heard this album, I just felt it like this isn't the first album I heard by them, but just from the second I put it on, it was like the way that this guy sings, his name is Rick McGuire. And this band kind of started as a solo project for him back in like 2010. And the way he sings is like poetry, but not like a folksy poetry. It's like he somehow like bends the music around his like rhyming structure and everything to where it seems like he's literally just talking to you. So is this something like, I, I don't know how much you've listened to. Uh, I, I know we've talked about Hobo Johnson and I know you listened to the fall of Hobo Johnson, which was his, his 2019 album. Uh, yeah, but have you listened to the rise of Hobo Johnson? I haven't listened to all of it. I mean, I've heard a few songs off of it, but okay, because a lot of that is, at least to me, kind of capturing what you're talking about, where it's kind of like spoken word poetry, but also musical in some some weird ways. Yeah, it's kind of in the same feel, I guess. Like he's uh, this guy, Rick McGuire. He's like singing, like very clearly, okay. like singing, not. Uh, Cause yeah, Hobo Johnson is like straight up awesome spoken word poetry, but in a musical way. And right. he, this guy, he's like singing, but it's hard. It's almost hard to sing along with him because it's like he kind of just keeps going whenever you think it should have stopped, or he stops whenever you think it should have keep like kept going. But it's somehow he makes it work. But he'll just like sing these nice like. I guess clean passages and then all of a sudden get super manic and just be like screaming. Hmm. Like there's, there's a song on this album called hair and the whole thing is just slow. There's parts of it that are pretty silent and it's just very reflective and emotional. And then like two tracks later, he is literally in a song called the soft hands of Stephen Miller, just screaming not not screaming words he's just like screaming and the music yeah. around him is just like going nuts and like <laughs> this drummer the drummer in this band has some sort of crazy internal rhythm that he can just do it like is it can, zach hill it is not zach hill he, <laughs> this guy has chill he has plenty of chill <laughs> but he uh also can just like somehow keep up with it and i don't i don't know how to explain it other than this guy has the ability to make music you can feel the music not only in what you're hearing but in the tempo that it's being played and it just adds like another layer 
to how the music sounds. All right. That's exciting. Yeah. I, I think I'd like to listen to that album at some point. Se- seems like it may or may not be right up my alley. Maybe, but maybe not. <laughs> I guess we'll find out when I listen to it at some point. Uh, we're coming. We're coming to the, to the end. We're we're blazing through this. I kind of kind of felt like that this was going to happen, but it's okay. We can we can fill the air with with whatever, or we can just call it a, a short episode. My number two pick, which I feel like for certain people that know me it would be surprised that this was number two and not number one. Um, but I think for you, it, it would make sense. My number two pick is Haley Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, her solo album "Petals for Armor." came out in may of this year so kind of early summer ish uh this is her first solo album her first musical release outside of paramore uh anybody who knows me probably has heard me talk about paramore and and knows that i am very much a big fan of Haley williams voice and her her singing and just everything about her as a person but uh this is her first solo album and it, it it excites me and it confused me and it just like <laughs> there was a lot going on around this album that and it was very artsy like she released uh the album it, it's kind of chopped up into like three or four sections mm-hmm. uh i forget what, what she calls them they're, they're, they're basically like acts so it's kind of like a kid cutty thing where she breaks the album up but she was releasing uh song by song in order on the album as music videos where all of the music videos were connected and it was so like the first four or five songs on the album tell uh, a story and the music videos are showing that story of those songs kind of a thing. And it's a, it's a lot about her growing as a musician, as a person, which is always good in music because it, it comes across as genuine, but it was just like, I don't know. It was so unexpected the direction she took musically and it it's, I think it was refreshing. I think it was, it's good that it's separate from Paramore as much as I love Paramore and would love another Paramore album. This music would not fit as Paramore music in my opinion. And uh, I think it's a good thing. I think she's branching out as a musician and and finally allowing herself some freedom that maybe she felt constrained with, with Paramore. But uh, yeah, I I don't want to, I don't get too deep into that because I feel like uh, we're going to do a big Paramore uh, binge kind of thing maybe next year oh, and yeah, cap are. it off with this. So uh, I'm not going to get into t- too much detail, but it it caught me off guard. It was unexpected in the best ways. And I fucking love Haley Williams. So <laughs> it's, it's, my, it's my number two pick. It's that easy. Well, hell yeah. That's awesome. I can't wait. I'm actually like super excited to go through all of Paramore's stuff. Okay. Maybe, maybe we do it sooner, sooner rather than later. I just... I've been hearing you talk about them. And You're going to be so disappointed because I've built it up so much. <laughs> well, I mean, like I've heard, I've, what I've heard from them, I like. So okay. I, I don't okay. think I will be disappointed. But I get, I get, we have time. We we can let's dive into that okay. just a little bit. Okay. What yeah. ha, what have you heard of Paramore? Because Paramore is a band that has evolved themselves, and I'm curious what what snippets of them you've heard. I've heard like acoustic. There's an acoustic set on YouTube that they did. I don't entirely. Was this like an, an, an NPR thing? Like it wasn't. Tiny Desk concert? It wasn't. It was kind of in the style of that, but it wasn't uh, Tiny Desk. Okay. They were like in a recording booth or something, but it was like. Her. Oh, was it like a radio show kind of thing? Probably. It was like Haley Williams and the guitar player. Yeah. And they, I've heard stuff like that. I, I do really like her voice. And yeah. I mean, I've of course heard like their big hits, like uh, "Misery," "Business," and yep. stuff like it's stuff from that era because okay. it was. I don't remember. Yeah, it was big. It yeah. was big in high school or middle school, maybe. I uh, think somewhere around there. <laughs> it was big on Rock Band or something. Oh yeah, well, it, it was on one of the. I, I don't think I, I. I don't know. That's not. That's neither here nor there. Yeah. Uh, and then. Whatever the album that had the butterfly on it, yeah, I've heard. Like I don't know song names because I've I've That's heard fun. most of them on the radio or on friends, like iPods in yeah, the car because you have friends. Yeah, yeah, I used to. I totally, I used <laughs> to have friends, and they used to listen to Paramore. But yeah, I've heard mainly more of the like 
pop punk, slightly yeah. emo type stuff okay. from them. Okay. Yeah, which I mean that 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 tracks yeah. with their, I think their their impact on our lives and, and the timing of all that. Cause riot was 2007. That's yeah. when I had mis- mystery business. The one with the butterfly on its brand new eyes came out in 2009. So that was like early high school, late middle school kind of dealio. Yeah. Uh, I guess mid mid high school even at some points. So that makes sense that the people our age were into that kind of thing at that time. Uh, I, uh, I'm not going to talk about that. I was about to, about to go into to my <laughs> history with Paramore, but I'm going to save that for when we, when we get there. Because that's I'll literally ramble for another hour if I don't if I don't stop myself. You know what? We should just whenever we do Paramore, just bang them all out in like a week. <laughs> we'll just back to back to back to back. Cause... Yeah, we're just gonna record a five hour episode and then chop it up. Yeah, that's because once once we start you, you're not gonna stop. Yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> want to stop anyway. Uh, so shit. What, what's man. what's your what's your number two pick, Joe? My number two is this one was fucking like last minute like this is the one that as i was writing the notes for this like this whole episode i was like i gotta add this instead of something else just just to clarify um you didn't necessarily rank the albums from most impactful to least impactful right they're just kind of uh, other other than the first one and maybe the second one that you're about to talk about they're just like they're, they're not necessarily competing with each other for a slot yeah, the the one that I picked for like the top pick is the one that I'm saving for last, I guess, is definitely my favorite. But the ones before that I didn't really put in an order necessarily. Okay. They're they're kind of just there. So, this so even this one that, that snuck in at the last second isn't necessarily like your second favorite album that you discovered this year, or is it? I don't know if it's my second favorite, but it's big right now. Okay. Like I've been I've been very immersed in this album right now. Or just this band and this is the album I picked, I guess. Sure. What what is it? But the suspense it is, is the the band is none and the album is Life Has Gone On Long Enough. Is that none like in you in or is that none like Oh, more in O N E. Uh they are a a black metal band from Portland. I think they're from Portland. They're very mysterious. So, uh, I don't know. Like, after we li- listen to Deaf Heaven, yeah. I just, I don't, it just re- renewed my want for metal. <laughs> and I tried listening to a lot of, like, the metal that I used to listen to, like, kind of the Scandinavian folk type metal, like, uh, El Elevati, I, I think that's how you pronounce it. But I used to, I used to love them like even more. Like, I guess typical stuff like Amana Marth in in that vein. Yeah, and it just wasn't hitting for me. So I thought, like, well, shit, I really enjoyed Dev Heaven. Like, what was that? And then I was like, okay, it was shoegaze and black metal. Right. So I was like, I guess I'll get into black metal. And I mean your normal black metal it's very harsh it's very in, intense to listen to especially right. on headphones but uh and like there's a time and place for that but that's not what i was feeling then i found this band in like a long string of related artists on spotify and it's they're just so atmospheric like the way this album starts off isn't even a metal song it just is it kind of sets an atmosphere of like a chilly, damp, lonely forest that you're kind of just stuck in. It's very black metal. And, <laughs> yeah, like it ser- it made me feel how I wanted to feel. And then in the second track, it kicks off with like this very intense metal. It's got the same typical like tinny guitar for a lot of it, but it's not fast like black metal usually is where they got like the tremolo picking, like the really fast right. s- stuff. It's kind of more just slow sludgy and the vocals aren't like shrieks. They're just kind of more like death heaven was where it's like a high scream. Interesting. And it, it like I've come to find out they're part of like a, a movement or a genre called depressive suicidal black metal. <laughs> and the whole point is just to make you feel kind of like hopeless. Yeah. Which is, and it it's did, <laughs> yeah. Like it, to, it did that. And that's what I wanted it. 
That's what I wanted from it. Yeah. And they just do it so perfectly. They're just very ambient. They're very atmospheric. They know how to create a world around you that you get put into. And it, it was just awesome. Like I've been listening to, they have three albums. I've been listening to them pretty much every, like at least one a day, sometimes two a day since I found them like maybe two months ago or it was, it was like a few weeks after we did right. death heaven. So well, fuck yeah. But, uh, That's exciting. Yeah. I, I feel like I would enjoy that because I mean, we, we talk about being sad boys and it's to, to a degree it's tongue in cheek, but also like sad music resonates a lot more yeah. with me and a lot more with Joey than happy music does. I know, I know we've kind of touched on that in the past, but like, I don't know. There, there's something, it feels good to feel not good sometimes. Yeah. Or just to feel like that hopelessness. It's like, he, that's not even, I guess to me at least necessarily like not good. It's just like, it makes you feel like empty yeah. in a way. Like there's a void in you. And it's like sometimes whenever something makes you, whenever life makes you feel that way, like it, it can, it sucks, I guess. Right. But uh, when, when it's on your terms. Yeah. Then it's, then it's pretty cool. Oh, and, <laughs> and it ends with a, this album, it ends with a Burzum cover, which we haven't gone into this. <laughs> I like Burzum. I like Burzum as a band. Not as, as, not as a, a burger joint. Yeah, not as a burger <laughs> joint. And uh, I, I'm gonna go ahead and I know we're not big or whatever, but just for future reference, uh, Joey, fuck that. We're the biggest music podcast in the world <laughs> at the point that somebody is listening to this. Well, then I especially need to say this: uh, Varg Vikernes, Count Grishnak, the guy that is Burzum. He uh, he has some very right wing and just <laughs> downright shitty political views i don't i don't agree with that i'm not part of because there is like even in the depressive suicidal black metal groups uh he kind of made an offshoot which is called i think it's nazi suicidal black metal like (laughs) great because but so burzum they're the pioneer he's the pioneer kind of of this type of music but he went to prison for murdering one of his like a guy that was in another black metal band back in the nineties when he came out of prison, dude just fucking went all right wing, but they covered us. They covered a track of his and it was really good. And that's just kind of my way of working around it saying, <laughs> I like, I like the music. I don't like the person I've yeah. separated the art from the artist. I like his art. I don't like the artist. And they are showing homage to that. Burzum was one of the first black metal bands that I ever liked. And right. that just, it was just cool to hear it. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think the separation of art and artist is a very important thing to be able to do. Yeah. Uh, for, for many reasons. Cause I mean, I don't know. I feel like that could be a whole debate where I could go back and forth 20 times on in, in that, like saying, well, okay. If you're listening to music that you like, because the music and saying that you don't like the artist, you're still supporting the artist and the artist is feeling yeah. validated for, for being a certain way, like fucking Kanye West. We yeah. talked about this a little bit on the Yeezus episode. Like, I don't personally agree with most of the shit Kanye West does. I think he's a fucking jackass, but he makes but it's, fantastic it's, music, and yeah. I'm, I'm here for the music. I'm not here to to stroke his ego, but I am inadvertently, I guess, stroking his ego by talking about how much I like his music. So I don't know. It's up in the air. I think it's an important distinction to have, uh, but I could honestly like, I, I see pros and cons to doing so. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a little easier to make for me nowadays in like the streaming world where I feel like, okay, if I'm listening to a cover of one of his songs or if I stream it on Spotify, he's not really making that much money off of it. So it's not like I'm supporting him in right. a monetary way as to where if I went to like buy his CDs or something, yeah. I feel, yeah, like I feel like I'm giving him more money. But I I don't know I don't know yeah. man. And I feel like covers are a totally different ball game. Like yeah yeah. Listening to a band like you said it's it's paying homage, paying homage, omelette omelette to do fromage, <laughs> to, uh, a, a forefather, a pioneer of the genre. Like I think that's yeah. a totally respectable and understandable thing to do, regardless of how shitty that person was. Yeah, and I mean the music, his music at that time did not even reflect that at all. I don't know if he felt that 
Right. I mean, black metal as a whole, they're very insular. They're all about keeping the outsiders out. So, I mean, like, I could... I don't know. It's It seems like all the signs were there back in the day, but the music was never about that. At least, right. Burzum's music never was. So, if it, it being a cover from that era makes me feel a little less icky than if he were to... <laughs> uh do a cover of something like Bellis like right. something off that album but well cool that's that's exciting uh we're we're up here we're, we are at the end of our lists we really we really out here we, now we, man we we really out here uh and i think i could i could segue into my number one pick by talking about the separation of art and artists but before we get there we we got some time we're going to we're going to throw in some honorable mentions albums that that we considered strongly for our lists or at least considered at all that's not true i have a lot of albums that i just considered at all yeah but uh so some of the, some of the the short falls of, of music due to no issue with the artists themselves albums that i really really liked but didn't quite make the list for me at least i got gorillas they released uh, song machine season one which if anyone knows me i I fucking love the gorillas and it's kind of a disappointment that this didn't make my top five i think but at at the time it came out i wasn't really vibing with it i've gone back to it a little bit and every time i do it's it's kind of a common thing with me and gorillas that the more i listen to an album the more i like it and i haven't had that much time to spend with it at this point um also on my list grimes uh miss anthropocene i can't fucking pronounce that word (laughs) anthropy and anthropocene or something i don't know grimes her new album 2020 album came out at the beginning of the year i think pretty fucking good it's very ambient very weird very like skittish which is is grimes also she has a child with elon musk now <laughs> what the fuck but uh good album definitely would recommend that uh another album i don't know how but they found me is the, the name of the group uh i put them on our list so we're gonna be talking about this album but the okay. album razzmatazz came out this year uh nine inch nails released two albums this year ghosts five and six i think oh shit uh, both very ambient albums both very Hell yeah. albums. uh eminem's music to be murdered by dropped this year also he just recently released like side b of that wasn't too crazy about side b but the, the original i think holds up pretty well in my opinion beach bunny we went over honeymoon love that album also something that is very recent discovery for me is a band called stand atlantic they're a uh, Australian pop punk kind of dealio. They released an album this year called Pink Elephant. They have a very much like what I would imagine Paramore would sound like if they came out today versus when they did come out today, uh, back in like the early 2000s. So kind of taking that pop punk feel and modernizing it uh, a bit more is kind of what Stand Atlantic gets me, which pre- pretty good. Well, that's pretty awesome. What about your, uh, your honorable mentions? Were the albums that, that just fell short? Okay, so I'll just go ahead and start. The the album that none kicked off the list is uh, the uh, it's by a band called The Extraordinaires. Uh, the album is Ribbons of War, and they're a very theatrical... I, d- I wouldn't even know how to classify them. This, this album is about... It's talking about like a sea captain who falls in love with an air woman. An air woman, <laughs> a, a plain woman, but it's so. There's <laughs> what like genre. Would you throw this in? Some of them are shanties. It's kind of folksy. It's kind oh, of yeah. poppy. It's kind of like just in that general okay mix. Uh, fit the another one. Fishman's the album is Long Season. This is on our list, and this it's this Japanese kind of pop, jazzy, atmospheric, cool album. And the singer just has this really high airy voice. It's great. And the whole album is just one song. So it's it's just, I love it. Because I like to listen to whole albums yeah. as one song. They just did it. So they just did it. Yeah. Are, uh, there, no, are there like clear demarcations of what would be songs? Or is it all like actually one song kind of a deal? I you could mark them, but I think it blends together pretty well, so that it kind of all morphs as it's going on. Okay. Uh, cool. Another one is Dan Deacon's newest album. Yeah. Uh, Become a mountain. It's just it is a fucking experience. <laughs> like 
the, one of the first times I listened to this, I was playing Skyrim at like one in the morning and I was just like existing. I was, I was literally climbing a mountain in Skyrim as the, like, there's a part where he's talking about becoming a mountain and it's just, it's just transcendent. If I can use that word. Interesting. I, th- I think the album is actually called mystic familiar. Become- it is called mystic familiar. Oh, yeah. You're right. Or a big signal. Sorry, I'm, I'm doing a little boobity boop research as you're talking about these things. No, it's definitely called Mystic Familiar. And uh, I don't even know. I guess the first song is Become a Mountain. Yep. No, this is. Yeah, okay. Is, at least according yeah. to YouTube music. Okay. Well, uh, there was also one of the bands that I, I don't know, I just kind of found more recently is a band called Drab Majesty which I was actually listening to the other night when we were talking about, I don't know, we were like playing games or something. Probably. And I was listening to this band, Drab Majesty. Uh, the album is The Demonstration. And holy shit, like if you <laughs> didn't, if I didn't tell you this right now, you would think they were like a new wave band in the line of like Joy Division or something out of the right. 80s, straight out of the 80s. Like it, it's just awesome. Like... I up until recently I didn't really care too much about that type of music from the 80s and then kind of as I fell more in line with like liking vaporwave liking a bunch of like hyper nostalgic music it kind of just happened to me and yeah. then I fa- found this band actually whenever I was watching Def Heaven's uh Amoeba does that what's in your bag series yeah. where yeah. they yeah it's uh so this was actually a band that one of the people from Death Heaven picked up. In Interesting. There. And I was like, I'll check it out. Yeah, they're, they're listed, uh, or at least the main musician, Deb Demure, calls their music Tragic Wave. Tragic Wave? Well, yeah. yep. That's <laughs> That sounds like every music that I would ever want to listen to. So, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> That's awesome. But uh, there's also a... Well, shit. <laughs> the, the genre is called Death Dream, the album that I liked found earlier it's i don't know kind of ambient electronic sampling where the whole point is to create the feeling like you're dying yeah is is what it's supposed to be but uh the artist is called father and the album is called white death and it's it does exactly that it's really good in the same vein that i liked none i like this album so interesting cool so, so Joey's year in summary, at least thus far, is kind of folksy, kind of, kind of death, death, d- dreamy, kind of, kind of, kind of black, black gazy, I guess, in some ways. Pretty, pretty out there. It's been a fucking vibe, dude. <laughs> it's, it's been a year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if you're done with your honorable yeah. mention, I guess we can fucking get to the, get to the point here. Oh yeah. Number one, which uh, I think you already know what's coming, and I, I feel like honestly a lot of people are going to see this coming, is Poppy. She released uh, her her third studio album, I Disagree, back in January. We talked about it. We did a whole episode on it. Talked maybe a little bit too much of it in uh, maybe too low quality because uh, that was <laughs> the first episodes that we weren't intending to release. But yeah. We released it in part. I wanted to release it because I wanted to release those episodes because I liked the discussion we had on mm-hmm. that, that album. And it, it's just, I don't know. I love her growth as a musician, as a character, as a person. It, it She has this lovely blend of pop vocals and blistering metal music. They took a lot of risks on the album. It paid off a whole lot. Uh, I actually saw she was, she is, was, is, the first female artist to be nominated for best metal performance at oh, the Grand which is pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of talked about having a segue of separating art from artist into this because uh, as most people are aware, uh, at least if you're familiar with Poppy, she and Titanic Sinclair kind of built Poppy as a project. Um, and there was some falling out late last year, early this year. Uh, while they were recording this album or shortly after they recorded this album where Titanic Sinclair, he's a huge douchebag and <laughs> a total asshole and he's no longer involved with Poppy, which I think is good for her. Uh, she also released a comic book this year um, called Poppy's Inferno, which is very much 
I, I don't know how much of it is accurately representing it, but it's very much talking about her as an artist struggling being, being brought up by Titanic Sinclair. Uh, he plays, he's, he doesn't play. I, I can't say that because nowhere does it mention Titanic Sinclair, but it's obviously representing her relationship with Titanic Sinclair, Titanic Sinclair being a huge douche nozzle that's using her and manipulating her and kind of pushing her away from what she wanted to be doing and using her to hurt artists that he has formerly worked with, such as Mars Argo, uh, which is, there's a whole lot of drama there, but the comic book I think shines some light onto the background and she kind of paints it in the way we, we were talking about this during that episode where it seems like some of the songs were written about Titanic Sinclair um, but we weren't really sure because I think the the official split happened after the album was finished recording. The comic book seems to imply that she was writing those songs about Titanic Sinclair, and either he didn't realize it, or he wasn't involved with it, or whatever. It, it was kind of like a last minute thing where she, like at least in the comic book, he expects her to go up on stage, perform something, and she ends up performing "I Disagree" and and burns the whole fucking studio down, kind of thing. Where it, I don't know, it's it's a lot about her as a character, a lot about her as a musician and as a person, and it's just it's a lot of growth in a short amount of time. And I'm super excited about this album, and I'm super excited to see what what comes next with Poppy. Well, fuck yeah, dude. I that, am that's too. A long, that's a long tangent to, to ramble on about, but it's my number one pick for a reason. I fucking yeah. love it. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna have to listen to it again after hearing you make such an impassioned plea. <laughs> if you want to borrow I, the comic book, I'll let you borrow the comic book too. Because I did like really like it. It's just I don't know, like and had I not had such a such a such an odd, I guess, musical year. <laughs> yeah. I probably would have added it on there. Uh yeah, that's a, that's a very good pick, an excellent pick, Thank very you. good callback to to a better time. Whenever we were just doing this podcast, yeah, we did on, it in uh, person, in person on my shitty little kitchen table that I drug into our living room. And yeah, lots of tapping noises, lots of clicking, like pins tapping and and, and stuff like that. And Roxy was whining. <laughs> Roxy was whining. Uh, better that's, times. Yeah, yeah, better times before the world ended. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but shit, man, I guess I'll go to my number one then. Yeah, this is the one that you were firmly uh, placing in your number one slot, even though you didn't really rank a lot of the others. This is this is the epitome of 2020 Joey. That's what okay. I'm getting at. What is it doing? Yeah. The band is called Frog, and I very much want to emphasize that band because <laughs> picking one of their four albums was literally the hardest part. No, the, 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 the Axel F thing, right? The do, yeah. Yeah, that's that's that frog. No, but no, this <laughs> this frog is a two man band from New York City. A uh, two man uh, gentleman band, perhaps. <laughs> yep, you know it. <laughs> Sorry, I'll stop distracting from your number one pick. I, I just uh, feel like I have this great release of having all of my picks out there, and now I don't have to do anything, so now I can just fuck with you while you're trying to get through it. <laughs> Oh my god! No, Jeremy. Frog, Frog, four albums from Frog. Which one did you pick? I picked their 2015 album, Kind of Blah, and I mainly picked it because it's the first one I heard by them, and it was just a very big moment for me this year because of how much I absolutely love this band. So, and when? when sorry, I don't want to interrupt. Oh no, yeah. interrupting. Um, when did you discover Frog as a band? Oh, shit. and I guess why do you think it stood out to you as much this year specifically? Honestly, I think I discovered them late summer. Okay, so, so, so it was a recent discovery. Yeah, it's relatively recent, but just the impact that they've had on me, like I, it's kind of nuts because I don't do this often. This this band is most of what I listen to whenever i'm like i have been listening to a lot of like the black metal lately but if i'm not listening to something for the podcast if i'm not listening to that i'm almost always listening to frog now interesting it's it's because they only have four albums each of their albums is about a half an hour long so it's they have about two hours of music maybe two and a half but i just like they blend a few different genres they're 
like rock, they're indie, they're pop. There's a little bit of like country to them at times. And just, they do not have a bad song for me. Uh, kind of blah. It's just very vibey, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's just for lack of a better term. Yeah. They're very nostalgic. They're very specific. Like how in Commit This to Memory, we talked about uh, bands that make very specific references. Mm-hmm. Frog, I feel like kind of does that, but they do it in the right way. I guess like <laughs> you said it, not me. I got, yeah. I got a lot of shit from Alyssa talking about <laughs> commit this to memory. And just want to be clear. You said the frog does it in a good way. Not yeah. me. Well, it's just, <laughs> they do it and it paints a, such a good picture. Like yeah. each song is like a little vignette. Like it's a little scene. It's a little p- picture from a play. And it's just, I don't know. It's it's very sad. It's very but silly at the same time. Like they have a song called "Wish Upon a Bar," which is just about kind of the self destructive heartbreak of somebody who is out of a relationship and somebody whoever he's in love with moved away mm-hmm. and he's pleading, "Don't tell me where you went. Like, don't tell me where you are because I can't trust myself with knowing where you're at. Right. And just That's I'm just gonna." Yeah, I'm just going to wish upon a bar, drink myself until maybe you'll come back one day. And there's a song called Everything Th- Everything 2002 where he's just starts off the song talking about just like the blissful unawareness of being a kid. Yeah. And talking about like hiding your dirty magazines in a tree by your neighbor's house and uh, hoping your mom and dad don't get mad at you and like it's just I don't know. They he's very good at picking moments in time and conveying them. And I don't know. It's just it just hits really good and Oh fuck yeah. Yeah. All of like just the way this album ends too is just really good. There's a song on here called Catch You Later, which like talks about what I would imagine to be a very committed relationship ending and kind of just fizzling. And it's, they just kind of, I guess, fall out of it, or at least one of them does. And it just gets ended with a catch you later and then they're gone. Hmm. And it's just, I don't know. Sad. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's just, I don't know. It's just really, really good. And I think I put this, either this album or their self-titled album on the list. And if I didn't, I think I'm going to, I know I've just described a lot of it, but I'm I'm know. intrigued for sure. Uh, so coming up at the, I guess this is kind of the the closing section of our episode, and that's been a weird one. We kind of rambled a bit, but that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted to have just kind of casual, chill conversation, talk about albums we like this year. Uh, to yeah. recap, uh, I'm just going to go through my five album artists very quickly, just in case people have forgotten or wanted a succinct list of what albums I think they should listen to. Uh, Deftones, Ohms, Halsey, Manic. Oliver Tree, Ugly is Beautiful, Haley Williams, Pedals for Armor, and Poppy. I disagree. Those are my top five picks, and you should check them all five out, I think. Yeah, well, and when you're done checking those out, or even before, you should check out my top five, which were Joji, Nectar, uh, Beach Bunnies, Prom Queen, Piles, Green and Gray, Nuns, Life Has Gone On Long Enough, and frogs kind of blah well just just check out everything frogs released i mean it's only going to take you like two and a half to three hours just just listen to all of it and and stick around stay tuned welcome to 2021 bitches we're going to be doing some maybe more casual conversations like this uh hopefully i kind of like i I enjoyed this less structured kind of feel maybe you guys hated it because it was less structured but let us know either way in the comments uh stay tuned we're going to be talking about some of these albums this year uh so if you're if you're curious but you want to put it off until you hear what we have to say, a why like we don't know what we're talking about, but b that's cool because yeah. we can have that experience together when we're we're discovering an album or sharing an album kind of a deal. So uh, let us know what you thought of this episode. Let us know what you think we should do in 2021. Uh, if we should do more casual shit. If we should finally start our uh, discussions for another episode series. <laughs> or, 
if you just just want us to shut up altogether. We're not gonna, but I'd like to know if you feel that way. Cause yeah, me too. We'll put you on blast on our podcast. Uh, we're all over social media stuff. You guys know what it is by this point. We've been we've been almost doing this for a year now, which is kind of crazy. Our first recording was like in January of this year. I don't think that's true. Oh, February. I think it was closer to March. March. Was that our first release? I think that was our first release. You might be right. You I, you might yeah. It's been a year, guys. It's, it's been a while. I don't remember things that I don't need to. Oh, my I, my poppy notes for I disagree were created March sixth. Oh. Well, in March, I think, is when we, we got sent home and, and then we started releasing shit. It doesn't yeah. fucking matter. You guys know what's up. It's been a year. It's been a hell of a year. Uh, we all survived, though. Well, hopefully. If you was, yeah, I mean, a lot of people died, which is unfortunate. And I don't mean to make, make light of that. It's God damn it, Jeremy. I mean, it's, it's fuck it. Like, people are fucking stupid. People died because people were fucking stupid. And I'm just fucking over it. And I feel like America's over it which is not a good thing, but yeah. vaccines coming. Maybe, hopefully we don't die from that. Fuck it. I don't know. <laughs> Fucking stay in our feedback loop. See you maybe if I don't die.